Good evening. It's good to see all of you. God bless you. So glad that you are so faithful to the house of the Lord. <clears throat> also want to thank you for all of your prayers over our nation and for the church. The Holy Spirit had spoke to me some time back and uh, asked me to shift gears in my prayer life and praying for the church and praying for America, that America would be at peace and that the church would be at peace. And, you know, some people think, was there something wrong with the church? Well, the, the, the world comes to the church. And much of the spirit of the world comes to church. The attitudes of the world, the mindsets of the world come to church. But the good news is, is that they don't have to stay wrong. It's not a sin. It's not a disgrace to be wrong, but it is a disgrace to stay wrong. If you turn with your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Title of the message tonight is Down to Earth God. God is a down to earth God. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 is where we will begin. And once again, we'd like to welcome those who are joining us by live stream. We would like to hear from you tonight if you we just say, you know, it's a great service, great comment. We love to hear from you, so make sure you go on the page, like it to a friend, and give us a comment, and we love to hear from you as well. Proverbs 19, verse 21. It says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are the plans in a man's heart. Many are the plans in a woman's heart. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What God wants is established, but how he gets it may vary. What God wants is established, but how he gets it may vary. Harry Truman, was asked how it felt no longer being the president. He responded that he had gotten promoted to a better job, citizenship. If Steve violate the law of love, then Steve is going to have to pay the price. If Steve's government violate the law of love, then Steve's nation will have to pay the price. And since Steve lives there, his life will be affected. Steve, at the time, will not be able to appeal to some higher court saying, but God, I didn't know what my government was doing, especially not in the society where Steve would have known had Steve been looking. And Steve would have realized had Steve been thinking. And Steve might have made a difference had he exercised his power to do so. We are accountable not only for what we know, but also for what we should have known. Everything is registered in heaven, even down to the last and the smallest detail. Jesus said, the very hair on your head has been numbered. Jonathan Bird has a shared opinion he would like to share with you. One of the worst things in the world is for people to know what is right and to remain silent in the face of what is wrong. Kingdom culture is stronger than politics. It doesn't matter who is in power. Politicians come and politicians go. Governments rise and governments fall. 
but kingdom culture still remains the same. The United States of America has a rich historical heritage of faith and an everlasting light that cannot be destroyed by sophisticated and political darkness. We are facing in the deep states. What we are facing in the deep states is not political, but darkness. This darkness offers a woman the right to sacrifice her unborn child on the altar of abortion. This darkness of child sacrifice originated from Satan himself. Jesus said he is a murderer from the beginning and he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Jesus said that Satan doesn't have the ability to tell you the truth. And anytime you see his lips moving, you know he's lying. It is a scientific fact that the human eyes see images because of light. It's a scientific fact that transmits signals to the back of the eye called the retina. The results of the process causes people to see things. The eye only sees light and it does not see the shape of the object itself. Without light, people have no knowledge of how things actually look. Revelation knowledge in the presence of God can cause light to shed on the areas of darkness. I have been asked the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, to enlighten the minds of the Supreme Court justice and that a swift decision of victory would, declare, would be declared because of default. The greater display of power the quicker the enemy will back off. I'm praying that the ever presence, that the ever presence, the presence of God would release a new grace in this hour and a refreshing wind to blow over our nation. In Romans chapter 1, verse 22, these words, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. In Ephesians 1.18a, from the Passion Translation, these words, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of their imagination flooding them with light until they experience a full revelation. I'm still talking about the Supreme Court justices. My prayer is that the light of God would illuminate their eyes of their imagination, flooding them with the light until they experience the full revelation. In Acts 3.19, that time of refreshing may come. Times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. In the God and man relationship, God is always the subject, never man. God is always the subject. He is the initiator the sustainer, and the consummator. In the beginning, God had a plan. In the beginning, God had a plan. And God's plan is still 
in effect. So God had a plan in the beginning and he had a purpose. And God had a will for his purpose. God acted with total independence, total freedom after the counsel of his own will. God didn't have to consult man for his will. God didn't have to consult man to establish his purpose. There is only one government, and it belongs to God, whose throne will never be moved. Only one government, and that government is God, whose throne will never be moved. He is the almighty God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. In spite of what mainstream media says to you, in spite of whatever outlet and social media says to you, he is the almighty God. He is King of kings and he is Lord of of Lord and what he said and how he said it will come to pass just as he said it he is the rule in heaven he is the rule in heaven he is the rule in heaven and he is without beginning and no end so I want to make that clear tonight that the culture of heaven is the only legitimate culture on the earth. There is no other culture on this earth that is recognizable to God. Only the culture of heaven. The culture of this world is influenced and controlled by the prince and the power of the air. Satan. It is an illegal culture. The structures that Satan has set up are illegitimate. Only the culture of heaven is recognized in heaven and on earth. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. It is the only, only legitimate culture that is recognized in heaven and on earth. And in the middle of this conflict and cultural clash between heaven and earth is the church representing the kingdom of God. Culture is the manifestation of a collective thinking of people. Whosoever controls the mind of the people creates and controls the culture. Whoever controls the mind of people create and controls the culture. Culture is the product of law. The most effective way to change your culture is to control its laws. That is what you see the battle for right before your eyes right now today is to control the laws. The kingdom of God is not a religion. It's a government and a society with a culture that is just as real as the one we wake up in every day. When the word of God is preached, prophesied, declared, and decree, it established concepts and precepts for kingdom living whenever the word of God is preached. Jesus told us to go into all the nations, all of the world, and preach, prophesy, decree, and to declare, to do what? That when you do so, you change the mind. There's a paradigm shift in the minds of the people. 
and it establishes a kingdom culture. So in other words, there is no other king but King Jesus. In the book of Daniel, chapter 4, please turn with me and go with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 4. Verse 27. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Hmm. Your children may live, perhaps, if you do this. All this came to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and the end of the 12 months, he was walking about in his royal palace of Babylon. And the king spoke, saying, Is this not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Sound like the news station I was listening to last night. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. There are some voices that are about to speak from heaven. That your kingdom is about to be departed from you. There are some who are walking around in their great Babylon. Walking around in their royal palace they said they're going to establish. There are some who are saying that today. And while the word will still be in their mouth a voice will fall from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. Somebody say it's not over. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like an oxen. Seven times or seven years shall pass over you until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. And he gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with dew of heaven until his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. All of the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time, my reasoning returned to me for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, my splendor returned to me. My counselors and my nobles restored to me. 
I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exhort and the honor of the king of heaven. All of those who works are true and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. God called Abraham. God gave Isaac. God chose Jacob. God raised up Moses. And God sent Jesus. And God reclaimed what was rightfully his, you and I. God has always worked in and through history to accomplish his purpose. God is always the object. God can take the worst thing that man can do and turn it into the best thing that ever happened. God is the creator of the earth, and he is the ruler of the universe. He is a friend to sinners and the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus was born to be crucified and to destroy the works of the devil. There you will always be crucified before crucifixion. Never forget it. He became poor, Jesus, that we might be rich. And his foolishness has become the wisdom of the world. And 1 Corinthians 1.25, these words, Because the foolishness of God, is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So my encouragement to you is don't panic. Don't panic. God sees from heaven. He sees all the way down to the smallest detail because it's recorded in heaven. In fact, he said, the very hair on your head has been recorded in heaven. And you are more precious and valuable to him than all of the sparrows. Don't panic. In Jeremiah 32, 17, these words, Oh, Lord God, Jeremiah says, Behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms. There is nothing too hard for you. It doesn't matter how much dark counsel is going on behind closed doors. God hears every word in every plot and every scheme. So I want you to know that God works in the things as they are, not as we wish. God works in the things as they are, not as we wish. Our faith operates in revelation that we have received in the midst of the mysteries we cannot explain. Physically, David was no match for Goliath, but David operated in governmental authority and the zeal of the Lord caused him to prevail. Isaiah 9 and 7 says these words, of the increase of his government and peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it, with judgment and with justice from from henceforth even forever. He says to order it. Kingdom, come. 
will of God be done. He says, you demand the works of my hand. You command the works of my hand to order it. And then the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Authentic faith has a healthy regard for facts. No matter how difficult or how negative those facts are, it may be error or sin to believe God is involved in something that he really is not. But it is indefinitely, infinitely worse to live as though God is not involved in something when he really is. The way we think either expresses expresses our faith or it undermines it. We must live with the conviction that our God has an answer for every situation in our nation's capital. We have to pray like it, talk like it, and rejoice like it. Just because, 2 Corinthians 4.18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. It's just temporary. Let them do whatever they want to do. It's just temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. That's God's righteousness and God's justice. Isaiah, 50, Isaiah 45, verse 3 through 8, these words. I will give you the treasures out of darkness. What they meant for evil, God would turn to our good. Don't panic. He's an almighty God. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. In him there's no beginning and no end. He knows how to make the wealth of the wicked be transferred to the righteous. Don't panic. So he says in Isaiah 45 verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches and secret places. There's a whole lot of money floating around that nobody knows about. <laughs> Don't panic. That you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by your name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me. God says so that they may know it. From the rising of the sun and the setting of the same, God said they will know that I'm God. God says, professing themselves to be wise. And God said, because of that, I've turned them over to a reprobated mind. Just like I did Nebuchadnezzar. But they will know that there is no God like me. Take heart. Don't panic. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. 
I formed the light and created the darkness. We don't always understand how God is going to accomplish a thing. And surely we are quick to say God can't be in that. Why can't he? God knows what's being said when you sleep. God knows what's being done when you're not present. God knows it when it was seated from the very beginning. Why? Because all things, God says, I will perform for my purpose. He said, Pharaoh, for this reason you were born that I might show my power in you. For this reason. Mm. Pilate, for this reason, you were born. For no other reason, but for my purpose. Goliath, you were born for no other reason but for my purpose. Lazarus, you were born so that these people might know that you sent me. Can anything be hidden from God? Take heart. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I formed the light and I created the darkness. I made peace and created calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. That's a good prayer. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. And let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let the righteousness bring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Edward Moat was a new believer who wrote, composed, and published one hymn in 1837. Arriving at the sit bed of a friend's wife, with no hymn book handy, Edward reached into his pocket and pulled out a folded up piece of paper upon which he had worked out four verses and one chorus. Blessed by the truths of God's word, the lyrics read, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest thing, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. In the book of Genesis, chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, beginning with verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that the Lord tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and he took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering. He arose and he went to the place for which God had told him. 
Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and, you will, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood, the burnt offering, and he laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and he said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire, the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself. The lamb and for a burnt offering. And so the two went together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called from heaven and said, remember the God involved in the things on the earth. Abraham, Abraham. And so he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hands on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked. God, God didn't create a ram. A ram was already in its place. And behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And so Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called on the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have swore, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Bless, blessings I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of your enemy. What a powerful truth from God. So God knows what's going on. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I said God knows what's going on. And God said, I created the light and the darkness. Turn to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. We're going to go to prayer in just a moment. Romans 4, beginning with verse 19. And being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, talking about Abraham. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced. I want you to be fully convinced convinced that what God has promised he is able to perform it doesn't matter what they say Apostle Lyon used to always say the squeaky wheel gets the grease and I'm here to tell you in spite of what they say and in spite of what they do God said the heavens belong to him and the earth is given to the children of men. And God is going to perform what he has said because the increase of his government shall know no end and the zeal of the Lord will perform it. Psalm 62 verse 5 and 6, these words, My soul waits silently for the Lord alone. For my expectation is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, and I shall not be moved. 
God's word is the only stabilizer for our lives and the world we live in. Our nation is suffering from uncertainty, uneasiness, conflict, confusion, and distrust. When we lose our oneness, our stability, our strength, and our care for one another, our foundation beneath us begins to shake. When our nation compromises law and order, justice and truth, morality and righteousness, integrity and equality, and the sincerity of life, the ground beneath us begins to crumble. And Matthew 7, 24 and 27, these words, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain descended and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. During the Cold War of the 1960s, America and the USSR was playing strategic games and cat and mouse. It was called a Cold War because neither country fired a substantial amount of weapons against the other in hostility. A Cold War is defined as a conflict characterized by the use and the means of short, of a short, sustained COVID military action. Webster's defined. When the body of Christ exercises its full governmental authority, demons won't even want a conflict. There will be no physical contact, and no one will shoot or fire. It will be a cold war, and the battle will be decisive, and we shall win from a place of strength. Proverbs 84, 7, the last verse says, they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before the God of Zion. Shall we pray? Father, we won't fret. We won't be in fear because you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the almighty God, and nothing can be withheld from your hand. You establish your throne on righteousness and justice and mercy and peace. And we stand here, your people, declaring your words, your gospel. We're declaring your ways into the earth. And we are decreeing that we have authority not only on the earth, but in the heavenlies and beneath the earth. And we stand in the power of your authority, and nothing by any means shall hurt us. So, Lord, we thank you for the army of angels who have been sent to minister to us who are heirs of salvation. And this night, we prophesy and decree the power of the Most High God and nothing shall be withheld from you. And we declare your kingdom come and your will be done. And the increase of your government shall know no end. And the zeal of the Lord will perform all that you have spoken. So we arise tonight because the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. The power of the Most High God has been established in our heart and your kingdom is being released from the words that we decree and declare. So we thank you Lord that the earth is shaken. Heaven is shaking and hell is trembling. And you are about to expose one of the greatest victories that we have seen in this generation. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for it in advance. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let the redeem of the Lord say, 
Amen. Amen. Sister Renee. And my servant has declared to you, my name and my power will be exalted in the earth. And my righteousness, I say, I will strike the earth, strike the earth, strike the earth, strike the earth. And it will perform and part, just like I did the Red Sea. I will part it, and my righteousness and my justice and my mercy and my peace will meet together. And they will see the cross in the sky. They will feel the shaking in the earth. I, the Lord, says, I will establish what I have said. I will do what I have promised. Let not your heart be troubled. Stand firm in my word. Stand firm in my word. Stand firm in my word and be clothed in my promise, says the Lord, and I will do what I said I would do.